Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Hope y'all are doing well, and I hope everybody's weekend was good. Um, we're going to come on, guys. Um, I'm going to come on so we can do um, Acts chapters 13 and 14. You guys are going to get most of a lot of audios from me um, this week. As we, um, I did post in the community tab the other day, like what we're going to be talking about for this week, but you guys are going to get a lot of audios from me with, um, like with the acts and we talked about stewardship this week. And then we have, um, we got something from our, uh, blue devotional book. Um, I think we're talking about understanding and victory. I have to check the notes, but you guys will probably get videos, but then you mostly get like a lot of audios. Um, so let's get into this guys. Um, Acts chapter 13, I'm in the bathroom because my son is asleep. He has school tomorrow, so I do not want to wake him up. I need him to get his voice raised. <laughs> okay, so um, Acts chapter 13, we're going to talk about Paul and Barnabas go to Cyprus. Paul and Barnabas go to Antioch and uh, Pisidia and also preaching to the Gentiles. And then 14 is Paul and Barnabas in Iconium. Paul and Barnabas return to Antioch in Syria. And just a brief recap, last time we read Acts uh, we talked about, um, you know, Peter was freed from prison with the angel in the whole situation with like uh, Peter and um, Cornelius and that whole situation. So now we're in uh, chapter 13 um, and it says, now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian, uh, Manian. Okay, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. I like this because, you know, it just reminds us as we see throughout this book, the importance of the Holy Spirit, the importance of prayer and fasting. And I really want to I'm gonna continue to encourage you guys with that. Uh, we've been doing it for years. I'm going to continue to encourage you guys with it to continue to build um, your fasting in the Lord. Continue to um, pray. Know that your prayers matter. They are so valuable. Continue to, you know, be united with the Lord. Pray fast. Seek, seek and inquire of the Holy Spirit because he will never lead you astray he is the spirit of truth he will lead you and guide you into all truth he don't say nothing of his own accord he is straight with father god like connected directly so let that be an encouragement to someone on here as well and then the impartation because it said and laid their hands on them they sent them away amen so you know great things happen guys with fasting, especially for righteous motives and like want to be close to the Lord, you know, and just different things. Great things happen in the midst of fasting. Great things happen um, in the midst of prayer. Your prayer life and um, the levels of prayer can always grow. Don't never feel like your prayer is too small or too big or it's too simple or it's too grand. When, it, when it's from a pure heart and Holy Spirit is the motivator behind it. God can do some great things. God hears our prayers. God hears our prayers when we pray um, in the Holy Spirit and tongues. God hears our prayers when we pray in our native language. God hears our prayers when it fits through cries or tears or silence or groaning or moaning. Holy Spirit intercede and pray for us. Romans 8 talks about that. And it's like, don't ever underestimate it, you guys. You know, because there is a mission with this. These men and these people's lives is being changed and transformed um, in their individually, yes. But the people, I don't know what that is, you guys. Just finished eating not too long ago. The people that um, they're touching as well, it, it's a movement for the Lord to be glorified. Okay, so... So they, and it says, so, so they sent, this is verse four for you guys, reading on me in the book. So they sent being, so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, and I like this, because even Jesus told them prior, before all this, 
Don't leave. Like, wait. Wait for the gift. Wait for the Holy Spirit. Wait for Father God to send it. And there's going to be certain times, guys, in ministry, in your personal life, or just certain directions from the Lord where you know God may be like sending you on a certain path or direction, but you have to wait for that. Go ahead. You have to wait for that green light. You have to wait. You may be in the right area or that may be the right turn direction, but you have to wait till you get the full go. Just because we talked about this before too, a number of times, just because you know, like the light is about to turn green. That doesn't mean you just shoot through because you know, oh, I feel the prompt and I just feel like I know it's going to turn green. Yeah, but you still have to wait till you get that. Um, you still have to wait till you get that green light. So it's okay to feel it, but make sure you get the goal before you go. That is a word for somebody. Make sure you get the goal, the green light from God before you go. You know? Okay, so verse 4. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the aisle unto Paphos, and in some translations, it'll tell you like some, I know sometimes like with the names, because God, like I said, God, God has been giving me back uh, with this um, King James Version last couple of weeks or so, like close to a month now, getting me back, like just mostly on it. He'll still have me read from other versions and things, but just mostly like with the videos here and my reading with it, you know, I still can read the other versions, but he won't be primarily in this. Um, but like some of the other versions, they'll tell you like the names like straight out. These are the names too, but like it'll make it like a little bit more easier to understand for some of you on here. I know sometimes like with the names, you know what I mean? Even like for me, like sometimes. So, um, yeah, okay. So, and when they had gone through the owl unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus. <laughs> what is this? Bar-Jesus. Now we have an act series, um from years back. So we broke a lot of this down and have more teaching on it. So I'm mostly just going to read, but this is a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. Guys, I'm still reminded of that scripture. There's nothing new under the sun. Like he says, he said, they were just doing this guys in this time. They're doing in this now time. They were doing it back in those days. It's literally, it's nothing new under the sun. This is why it's really important guys for us to daily build our personal relationships with the Lord, daily built up in the Holy Spirit, and just draw close to God. No, we're not perfect. We got this flesh, this fallen world we're living in, but God honors us seeking Him. He honors us. He can help us. He gives us the victory. He help us to grow in Him. He help us to be transformed and look more like Him. And it's like that is that is very important because look at this here, Bar Jesus. There's only one real Jesus, Jesus Christ. There's only one real one, but so many try to mimic and say they're this and they're that. And it's like this, this say whose name was Bar Jesus, which was, which was what the deputy of the country, Sergius, Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, what stood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. So they he's trying to block the move of God in this person's life that can receive it. Okay. Then Saul, who is who also is called Paul, Apostle Paul, basically they're talking about, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on them, okay, because he ain't come to play. And said, Oh, full of all sub subtly and all mischief. Thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And, you know, let me keep reading. I'm going to say something that. And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist in the darkness, which means the word went forth immediately. And as we look throughout this book of Acts, we keep seeing that word immediately because God is always going to back what is of him. God is always going to back what is of him. He always will. All, always. And immediately there fell on him a mist in the darkness. And he went about seeking something to lead him by the hand because he, like that, went blind. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, 
They came to Perga in Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. Now, before we continue this chapter, because I'm not going to be before you guys long, you know, just think about this, how this person noticed that it was going to move a God and wanted to block someone else blessing, wanted to block someone else life being transformed. And you can't allow anyone to block you getting what God has for you. That could even be you going deeper into things of God or um, going deeper, like in your gifts or your, your talents or just your full purpose and destiny in the Lord. Like you can't allow anyone to allow you to um, miss God move or get in the way. You, you can't even let someone like deceitful or anything. This is why our discernment have to be on, 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 on point, guys. It has to be. This is why we need Father God. Because he didn't want this man life to be changed. He want, he was used by the devil. He, he told him, he said, you child of the devil. And you got to be able to discern and recognize who sent them into your life. Why are you in my life now? Why do you want to connect? Where did you come from? What spirit are you of? I don't care what your title is. I don't care what you sound and look like. Who sent you? Who sent you? If you're getting some crazy mail packages and stuff at your address, you don't just openly receive that stuff in your house, especially if it's wrongly, you know, addressed and it's not to you. You need to take that stuff where it goes, send it back to the mail. You, this, this, that's not belong in my house. And that's how some of you have to be. Everybody can't belong in your life. Everybody can't belong in your ear gate. Everybody can't belong in like your your heart, your life, your space, your time with God, your spiritual journey. You got to be able to discern because this man was trying to block this and God dealt with him. And the man still got free, the other one. But still, who's to say if it wouldn't have been Apostle Paul, then it would have been someone else. Not saying they, it couldn't have been done through them, but I'm just saying. But look, we see like what they were, what? Early in this chapter, they were, um, they ministered to the Lord. They fasted. They fasted and prayed. They received impartation because, because hands were laid on them. And all hands laid on people, you have to be careful people laying hands on you. I'm not saying this for everybody, but this is a word for somebody. All impartation is not holy, righteous impartation. You got to be very mindful of what spirits is being transferred and what impartation is being imparted into you. There's false demonic spirits in the anointing. And deception behind that and it's, it's the Holy Spirit's righteousness is of the Lord you can't just let everybody just speak over your life or pray over you I'm telling you this is a word for somebody you have to be able to discern you see Apostle Paul was not playing with him he gave him the business in the spiritual realm and we got to remember he was blind too, perse persecuting the Lord the Lord had to stop him the Lord said you know it is hard for you to kick against the pricks or the gold you 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 coming for my people you you coming for me he didn't say that to him, but I'm just saying, paraphrasing. And he dealt with him and he was blind. He really had to change this man's life. Let me calm down because my son is sleeping. He really had to change this man's life and transform him. So Apostle Paul knew what this was. And then look at how God gave him the authority. So it's just always good to just be on the Lord's side and continue to strive to be on the Lord's side. Because at the end of the day, that's the side that's going to win. That's the side that has won. That's what's going to matter. That's what's going to remain. Because he was not playing with this man at all. So Paul and Barnabas go to Antioch and Pisidia. Now, when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia and went into the synagogue. And they went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them saying, excuse me, guys. Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Excuse me, guys. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with in high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And I don't know why I'm feeling like to say this for somebody, but let's put a pin real quick in 18 because I'm not going to be before y'all long. I'm feeling like for, for me to say this for someone. God forbid, but if you was to pass today or in a few weeks or in a few months, it's like this is a perspective shift for somebody. If you was to pass 
like in a few weeks, a few months, or even somebody close to you, like that you bickering with or you arguing with, or y'all need to be united, or you need to just stop letting little things get to you. There are certain things you wouldn't let get to you. There are certain people you would not let get to you. There are certain things like you will see. God don't want you in the state of. I'm telling you, this is a word for somebody. God don't want you in the state of regret. God don't want you in the state of we could have worked this out or I should have forgiven them or I should have gave them their flowers when they was here or I could have tried to be the be better person or I could have made peace or be been more Christ-like or I could have forgave them. Maybe I didn't have to connect with them like that, but I didn't have to treat them the way I did or let them treat me this way or let certain little things get to me or bother me or keep me out. This is a word for somebody or keep me out of my destiny or letting their opinion stop me from doing what God called me to do and going in fear and that's coming against my faith and God is saying, you need to maximize your time. You need to think like that because that's going to help you to put things and people in perspective. You can't let little things get to you. You can't let this or that. It could be any area of your life. You can't let that get in the way. And then, God forbid, something happen. You know, that's like that movie. I watched this years and years ago, like when it first came out, that Tyler Perry movie. Why did I get married? But in the second part, I believe, um, Janet Jackson, I forgot her name, like they say like perfect patty, whatever. And um the dude, her her husband at the time, but they was going through like a separation or divorce or something. And you see, like in the end, I don't I haven't seen this in a year, Scotch from like when it first came out. This is like the older a older movie. So did this thing go off? Okay, because I don't want this to take away from what we're doing, all these these things. So anyways, guys, let me finish up. But um, they was arguing or whatever. Because this is what I literally saw before telling y'all this word. So the Lord is saying this for everybody. And it don't have to be like that, but this is the severity of it. They was arguing and he was um, backing out or whatever. And they was, they was heated. They was arguing. Even when he was driving away, she still was like talking at him from what I can remember. And I think uh, something hit him, a big truck or a big something hit him and he died. Like um, they all went to the hospital and everything, but he didn't make it. And they ended, they didn't end right. You know, and, and it, it did show like the end, like what happened, like I believe with like some of the other ones that was on there. Cause you know, it was different couples and things like Jill Scott, uh, Tasha Smith, I think that was Tasha Smith, like some of the other ones, but it's like, um, her and her husband, her dude, like they did not end right, you know. And of course, like they went on and like they honored him and celebrated him and like like they they lives changed and different things for that. But it didn't have to go that way, even though that probably did make her to a better person. But that's what the Lord showed me that that picture in my mind while I was reading this to make me stop before we continue on. That is a word for somebody. You don't want it to be like, I'm not saying it have to be like that, like that, but just saying it could be anything. Stop letting your emotions control you. Stop letting what happened or didn't happen. Like, what can you do to maximize the most of your time in your life? And no, we're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. That's how we learn sometimes through our mistakes and, and falling on our butts and getting back up and things. And God, by God's grace, but it's like, if you don't have to go certain routes, do not go certain routes. Do not go certain routes. Do what's going to cause you to have peace. What's not going to cause you losing no sleep. You know in your heart you did the right thing. Whether they receptive, this is a word for somebody, whether they receptive of it or not. You know, and God know, and God will honor that because God know your heart, and God see your motives, and God know you are trying your best, and God sees the situation. So you can't think so much about what they're going to say, what they're going to think, or their attitude toward No, God is, he'll deal with that. But he see for you, you not going back and forth to protect, you are maximizing most of your time in your life. Do that make sense? Does that make sense? Did that make sense? Like that. Okay. In about the time of 40 years, okay, 17, the God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt and with an high arm brought, brought he them out. So with a mighty hand, with his outstretched arm, God brought them out, even from Egypt, even from that land of oppression and bondage and under that Pharaoh and all those things. There's no power greater than God's. When you put your trust and your faith in God, there's no power that is greater than him. There's no power that's greater than God to stay connected to him and believe, you know, in about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness 
right? They was in the wilderness for 40 years. And I believe that journey should have been like less than a, a, a month or some weeks. And they were in there for 40 years. We talked about that before, but somebody need to really think about this verse 18. So for he, there are men is in the wilderness, but a lot of them couldn't, um, the Lord had to like really like cause a lot of them to uh, fade out. And he had to like do something new. What, what remained, he really had to cause a lot of them to fade out because of like the, the attitude and the things that they had and things. And it just was like, you know, no. So, and when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, Shannon, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward, they desired a king, and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony. and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. So Saul here in this case is not Apostle Paul. This was um, King Saul. Remember King Saul? Um, Jonathan's father in... Um, him, King Saul. Remember when the when God was their king, but the people wanted um a king. They didn't want God anymore, pretty much. They wanted a king. And God gave them what they wanted, but they lost him. Uh, they, they didn't fully lose him, but they lost what they had when they had him originally. And Saul, like, he started off one way, but then like he got really big headed and prideful from disobedience and it was just um kind of almost like a domino effect. We do have a teaching teachings actually on him. So he's just going over like a review with them basically right now. Um, Apostle Paul um, speaking to them. So um, the other Lord, okay, said and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed, have God according to his promise, raised unto Israel's savior, Jesus. Cause we know that Joseph, which was his um, stepfather, um, the man that helped raise him, he was of the, um, the lineage of King David. So, you know, okay, so um which shall fulfill all my will. Like if you go down the genealogy, and we do have some genealogy genealogy videos, but if you go down it, you will see why this was said and it was fulfilled in the scripture. And also how it was fulfilled that Jesus Christ is the Son of Man and the Son of God. Yeah, it's tied for both. Um of this man see how God according to his promise raised unto Israel's Savior, Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me whose shoes of his feet I'm not worthy to loose. I'm not even worthy to untie his shoes. I'm not even worthy. Thank you, Lord. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham. That doesn't say that, but just thank you, Jesus. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham and whosoever among you fear with God to you is the word of this salvation sent. I'm reminded of that scripture that talks about don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. When you hear that's been on me for some months, well, some years, but really some months with um, just these videos and just me personally reading like, don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart when you hear like a self receive. Amen. As the promises of God are yes and amen, let your response be yes and amen. Be in agreement with God. God is not someone that you want to be in a disagreement with. God is someone that you want to be in agreement with. If you want to agree, if you're in agreement, you should be in agreement with him. That's the best agreement and covenant that you can be in. Because everything else naturally will flow. So when that's straight and right and taken care of, Everything else will flow and make sense. So um, this thing is getting ready to cut off. I'm going to read what we can, guys. Let me just finish up. Um, yeah, so um, it's this word. It's this to you. It's the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And thou... They found no cause of death in him. And though they found, I got to get used to it, guys. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. Remember what that, guys? And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in the secular, right? But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people, 
And we declare unto you glad tidings, like good news, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, to us, their children, and that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second Psalm, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Excuse me, guys. Wherefore, he said also in another Psalm, thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Talking about Jesus Christ. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. So although it's being declared to them, they have to choose, like, you know, behold, don't despise and wonder and perish in it when it's being preached to you, when it's being given to you. The Lord is saying this loud again for someone. You got to continue to maximize and make the most of your time. I know you guys keep hearing me say that. But like the Bible says, you got to be instant in season, and out of season. That is a scripture that keeps me going in the ministry and the work of the Lord and what God gave me to do. Like through everything, amidst everything. You got to be instant and see not a season. The Lord is saying that you've got to maximize your time. Maximize what he gave you. Maximize it. So preaching to the Gentiles. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. And when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Hold on, y'all. Okay. Okay. I'm going to read again. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold, right? They didn't shrink back. They continued to be bold. That's the thing for someone in wherever you are, in ministry or your gift or in your job or your education in your house, whatever your position is, be bold. Don't shrink back. Don't do it. Don't shrink back. Go forward. Be bold in what God has given you to do. God will give you grace to be bold. He will give you the grace to be courageous. He will give you the grace to go forward. Like uh, I believe it was David said, the Lord has given him, I think this is in Psalms 18, the ability to advance against the troops and the leap over walls. The Lord has basically like equipped him for the victory pretty much. It's paraphrased because that's a long psalm, but it's very encouraging. It's like a warfare psalm almost in the psalm of victory and the Lord is not playing at all. So, um, yeah, you got to just be bold in the Lord. God don't want you to shrink back. The Lord don't want his righteous to shrink back. He want us to be bold. That line of Judah, he want us to be bold in him. He want us to be bold. Yes, wax bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and... Judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So basically they like, y'all didn't want it. So we turn to the Gentiles. And that wasn't everybody because there were some Jews that believed and some that didn't believe. Just like in this day, there's many that believe, but there's also many that don't believe. You know, that's like Gentiles. There's some that believe, some didn't believe. Some in this day believe, some don't believe. But like the Lord said, there's no Jew or Gentile. We're all one in Christ. And I'm not taking away from the divine inheritance like of the Jews. or I'm not talking with none of that at all because we didn't talk about that. And I've given you Bible before, but basically they saying you guys didn't. So we turned to ones that would be open to receive. Basically, for so hath the Lord commanded us saying, I have set thee to be a light of of the Gentiles that thou shouldest be for salvation to the ends of the earth. We're going to have to pick up 14 in the next Bible study video. Um, you guys, I thought I was going to be able to read it all, but we're going to have to close with this because I can't do, um, 
I maybe can do 14, but I may just do 14 in audio part two. Yeah, I'll do 14 in audio part two, but I'll make that one a little bit quicker. I'll try, but I just don't like quenching the Holy Spirit. Okay, so, so, so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I've set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word, the notifications, guys. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them because that's what Jesus said. If they don't receive you, shake off the dust and just keep it pushing, keep it moving, basically. Shake off the dust. Literally shake it off as a sign against them. Some of you, you got to get, you got to do that. It may hurt, it may not, but some of you got to shake off the dust and keep moving. God will give you the strength, he will give you the grace. But you see here, um, but they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to stop because that's the end of um, 13. We're going to read 14 really quick in part two. All right, you guys, be blessed. Thanks for tuning in.